Hi X281 students. This video is a companion video for the VS Code with WSL document on Canvas. I've noticed a lot of students are having issues with setting up VS Code with WSL debugging, so I figured I'd make this video to walk you through it again, uh, just to make sure that you've got everything set up correctly. So um, I'm going to assume that you've already got WSL installed. If you don't, go ahead and check out the document on Canvas for instructions on that. It should be pretty straightforward. So once you do have WSL installed and VS Code, um, the first thing we need to do is install a couple of extensions. Now we need two extensions for debugging uh, C++ code using uh, VS Code. So the first extension we need is the remote-wsl extension. All right, it's right here. So let's go ahead and click install. Now what this extension does is it allows us to run our VS Code inside of WSL. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is reopen VS Code inside of WSL. Now to do that, we need to go down here to this little green box and click it, and click Open Folder in WSL. Okay, now it's going to ask me like which think piece of code do I want to open. I've already got this file open, but if you don't have it, you can go find it in your uh, computer on your computer. So let's select folder. Okay, so now you can see down here it says opening remote. So that means it's kind of connecting to WSL right now and getting everything set up. <clears throat> the next extension you need is the C, C++ extension. Okay, so this is one, it's by Microsoft. Um, that's gonna allow us to have code highlighting and all sorts of other things. Uh, it's just downloading stuff right now. <clears throat> okay, looks like it's installed. So the next thing we want to do is install the stuff we need for debugging the command line tools. So, sorry, the command line tools we need for debugging. So you can open up your uh, Ubuntu terminal, or you can open up the one on uh, VS Code if you'd like, and run this command. It's sudo apt install build essential gdb. And so that'll install make and gdb and a couple of other things that you might need. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is open up the folder where your code is. So this is the folder I've opened up. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to compile the code I have. So here's my tutorial.cpp and my make file is all set up. I think we have instructions for that somewhere else. So to, to make a debug build, you have to type make debug. And so that will compile your code with debugging uh, symbols enabled. That's what this dash G3 is for. So it'll create an executable called tutorial underscore debug, which is what you need. Um, if you happen to just run make, and it makes an executable called tutorial, or just whatever your executable name is, without an underscore debug, it's possible that it wasn't compiled using debugging symbols. And if that's the case, whenever you set a breakpoint in your code, it will not find it like when you're trying to debug. So this is really important that you make a debug build. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually start debugging. So to start debugging, we have to click this, this run thing and click run and debug. And so it's going to ask us, okay, like what environment do you want? Because it needs to make a file that gives you all the, gives us all the settings it needs to debug. So what we want to click is gdb slash lldb, not the Windows one. We want the top one right here. Click it. And then we, we have all these different options. G++ build and debug active file, cpp. We don't want these default configuration should be enough. The other ones are a little bit more complicated. So this is what should come up when you click the default configuration. The two things you need to pay attention to here are this program string and the args array. So the program string is just uh, a like path uh, of your de debug executable. So we, all you need right here is this workspace folder and instead of a.out, remember we have tutorial debug, so tutorial underscore debug. Okay. Now this is what where you put in the command line arguments. Now let's say for tutorial debug, you're supposed to run it with maybe dash m flags or dash v flags. You could put those here by doing this. Add a string, do that. If you want to add another flag, you could do dash v. Okay. Now in this specific case, we don't need any of those flags, so we're not going to use those. 
What we do need though is if you notice here, it takes input from CIN. And we have a couple input files that we'd like to connect to CIN. So we're going to use input redirection. Now input redirection, the way it works is it's actually a shell primitive. It's not something that has anything to do with C++. Uh, what you do is you do that arrow there and then you put your input file. So unique-3.text is what we're going to put in. Okay. So what this does is this arrow connect, uh, takes all the contents of this file and connects it to standard in or C in so that whenever you read from C in, you're going to be reading from that file. So let's see what the output is when we just run it in terminal. It's found three unique numbers. Okay, cool. So if we want to run it through our debugger, let's do it like this. Let's add a string. The string is going to be that uh, input redirection symbol. The next, and then a comma, and then another string, which is going to be unique. Oops. Dot text. Okay, so there are our two strings. That's going to represent this. Okay, and let's save our launch.json. <clears throat> so let's start debugging. Okay, and now it ran our code uh, and it stopped at this breakpoint. So I'm going to get rid of this breakpoint and continue. All right, and it's done. So if we look at our terminal, it should say found three unique numbers. Now, if you want to stop in the middle, because if you don't put any breakpoints in, it's just going to run through normally, you can add a breakpoint. You can just put a breakpoint here and run it again. And it'll stop there. And you can just step over and keep going through the code. Uh, if you want an explanation on what these buttons do, go ahead and check the document in Canvas. Uh, that should be all you need to get set up debugging in VS Code. Um, this stuff is really important. If you don't get this stuff right, you won't be able to debug. Uh, making a debug executable is very important. And something else that's very, very important that's hard to notice is checking to make sure that the bottom left box says WSL Ubuntu or WSL Ubuntu 2004. If it doesn't say that and it's just a green box with arrows, your stuff is not going to work. You might not get your C++ IntelliSense. You might not get your um, debugging. It might not work correctly. So you need to make sure that this is like that. And another thing you want to make sure of is in your extensions, C or C++ should be installed under WSL Ubuntu right there and not locally. It's OK if it's in both, but it has to be installed under there. otherwise. Again, it might not work correctly. So that should be all you need. Um, have a good day, and good luck with the rest of 281.